Today I wanted to describe a hardware and software project I recently completed, a single board computer based on the 6502 processor. The 6502, of course, is the popular 8-bit microprocessor that was used in many early microcomputers, including the Apple I and Apple II series, Kim I, Commodore PET, Ohio Scientific, and others. A version of the chip is still being manufactured today. There are many 6502 single board computer designs out there. It's almost a rite of passage in retro computing to design one. They all vary slightly based on the designer's goals and personal preferences. Mine was loosely based on Grant Searle's minimal chip count 6502 computer as a starting point with some additions and changes. I was also inspired by Ben Eater's series of blog posts that build up a 6502 single board computer on a breadboard. The design has the following hardware features. A single board computer with a 6502 processor running at up to 2 MHz. It can use an original 6502 or the newer CMOS 65CO2 that's backwards compatible but offers additional instructions. 32 kilobytes of static RAM, 16 kilobytes of ROM using a 27128 EEPROM, a 6850 based serial interface, using an FTDI USB to serial converter, not a full RS-232 interface. This means you can plug it into a computer's USB port and not require a serial port. I use the Motorola 6850 rather than the MOS Technology 6551 as it can be hard to obtain. The board can be powered from USB or an external 5 volt supply selectable by a jumper and has a power indicator LED. Reset supplied at power on as well as via a push button. A jumper selects whether to run the CPU from a separate clock oscillator module, typically 1 or 2 MHz, or from the 1.8432 MHz serial clock, avoiding the need for a separate oscillator module. It has a 6522 Versatile Interface Adapter, or VIA, and associated header connector for access to the VIA signals. This is similar to, but more powerful than, the Motorola 6820 PIA, and provides two 8-bit I.O. ports with handshaking, timers, and a shift register. An onboard push button and LED can be connected to the VIA for test purposes. A 32-pin expansion header provides access to the CPU signals, and interrupts from the ACIA and VIA are connected to the CPU to support interrupt-driven programs. It's built on a small, double-sided, silkscreen printed circuit board that can be sent out for manufacture by any number of low-cost PCB vendors for as little as two US dollars per board for the bare printed circuit board. It uses all through-hole parts, making it easy to assemble by hand. Some parts are obsolete, but are readily available as new old stock. The ROM image features a port of Microsoft BASIC taken from Grant Searle's single board computer design. It's based on the Ohio Scientific version of Microsoft 6502 BASIC that was built from the same code base for a number of microcomputers of the time. The same ROM also supports my JMON machine language monitor, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Alternatively, I have a ROM image which runs a port of Lee Davison's Enhanced BASIC, which is more powerful than Microsoft BASIC, but is less compatible with Microsoft derived BASICs. If you want to write assembly language programs, you can cross-assemble them on a desktop computer and download the binary to the monitor program. I recommend the CC65 tools for a cross-assembler. It also provides a C compiler, which works as well. Let's look at some of the software support, first with the Microsoft BASIC ROM. You'll need to plug a standard FTDI USB to serial adapter into the 6-pin header and connect it to a laptop or desktop computer running a serial terminal program. I use Minicom under Linux. The board will get its power from the USB port if the adjacent jumper is connected, and the red power LED will come on. On reset, it prompts for cold start, warm start, or monitor. Pressing C will perform a cold start of BASIC. It will then prompt for memory size. Pressing enter uses all of the detected memory, 32K. Entering a smaller value allows you to reserve some memory for other uses such as machine language programs. It also prompts for terminal width so you can adjust the desired maximum line length. It then shows the amount of available memory, almost 32K, and the version of this basic, circa 1977. Incidentally, there's a well-known Easter egg in this version of Microsoft BASIC. Entering A at memory size will display written by Richard W. Wyland. This was the Microsoft employee who wrote the OSI port of BASIC. 
Some versions of this basic instead say written by Wyland and Gates. If you hit reset intentionally or on purpose, you can select warm start and it will preserve any existing basic program still in memory. This is a typical Microsoft basic of the era with no commands for graphics or sound, but supporting floating point math with trig functions, etc. Here's a simple example I can type in and run that prints the numbers from 1 to 100 with their squares and square roots. You can load and save basic programs via your terminal emulator program on your desktop computer. Something fun to do is to enter games from magazines and books of the era such as 101 Basic Computer Games by David All. I have versions of these available on my GitHub account. Here's an example of running a game of poker. The other boot option is Monitor, which loads a machine language monitor of my own creation I call JMON. I think it's quite easy and user-friendly to use as well as being powerful. You can display memory in hex and ASCII. or disassemble it as machine language instructions. You can copy, fill, search, test memory, and calculate the checksum of regions of memory, as well as being able to write to memory. Do hex to decimal conversion and hex math. You can also run programs specifying the values of registers, setting breakpoints in RAM, single stepping, and disassembling memory into machine language instructions. There's even support for a simple resonant assembler I wrote, but this needs to be downloaded into RAM as it doesn't fit in the ROM in addition to BASIC. An alternative ROM can be installed with Lee Davison's Enhanced BASIC. It boots up with a similar prompt and is used much like Microsoft BASIC. It has many more commands than Microsoft BASIC and takes up most of the 16K ROM. Getting back to the hardware, there's one onboard LED and one push button that you can connect to the VIA with jumper wires to do some simple hardware experiments. Here it is running a small example program that controls the LED state using the push button. This can be done from basic or machine language. You can connect the VIA and any other desired signals to a breadboard to perform more complex experiments. Here I've interfaced the computer to a 2x16 LCD display. All 6502 bus signals are available on a 2x32 header that can be used to connect other external circuitry. 
You can use my PCB design files, schematic, and parts list to build your own board if you desire. The schematic and PCB layout were developed using web-based software called EasyEDA, and I had my PCBs manufactured by JLC PCB. You'll need an ultraviolet eraser and EEPROM programmer in order to program the EEPROM. All parts should be readily available from sources like eBay. Some are no longer manufactured but can be obtained as new old stock from vendors such as Unicorn Electronics. This was a fun project. I still plan to explore some more software such as a port of BBC Basic and maybe look at some hardware like external SD card flash storage for loading and saving files. Also on my GitHub site is a similar 6809 based board, also based on a Grant Searles design. It runs a subset of Radio Shack Color Computer Basic. I've also built a more complex 68000 based computer which I've covered in some other YouTube videos. References to a number of sites that I've mentioned in this video are listed here.